the EU, we see that um, raw materials supply is high on the agenda. Uh, you have the COVID-19 crisis, you have the war in Ukraine, and you have increasing geopolitical tension between the US and China disrupting supply chains. Paul, how do you see the role of aluminium in the green transition? Well, aluminium uh, has uh, for decades been called the metal of the future. Uh, and the reason uh, for that is that it carries many of the characteristics uh, which uh, support uh, the long-term uh, megatrends uh, in the green uh, transition uh, and in uh, a more resource-constrained uh, world. Having uh, a metal uh, which is uh, lightweight, uh, infinitely uh, recyclable, uh, which uh, has high uh, conductivity and is uh, very resilient, is uh, something uh, which uh, is attractive. And uh, as such, um, we have seen uh, and we will continue uh, to see uh, that the demand for aluminium uh, remains strong. And Tronulov, what do you think are the main growth areas for aluminium in the green transition? Important uh, sectors are, for example, the automotive sector, uh, where uh, you need a lot more aluminium in electrical vehicles, uh, for example, compared to traditional cars. Uh, light wetting is important in electrical vehicles, that is equal to driving range, and you need a lot of aluminium for crash protection. So that's one very important um, new market, growth market for aluminium uh, with the green transition. The whole energy transition needs a lot of aluminium in, in grids, uh, electrical grids, uh, in, uh, in solar parks. And aluminium is a good substitution to copper in many instances when it comes to uh, electrical conductivity. So generally there's a lot of uh, interesting growth opportunities for aluminium and aluminium is a key building block uh, to actually execute uh, on the green transition. Looking ahead, what innovations or advancement in aluminium production are necessary to take the next step for aluminium in the green transition as a green product itself? We need to produce aluminium much more sustainably uh, than we have done in the past. I think uh, recycling is a, is a key area uh, to grow a recycling share of the total metal supply when it comes to aluminium. Then you have technology development when it comes to uh, uh, scrap sourcing, for example, and scrap sorting. Uh, and, and build more sort of uh, recycling capacity uh, to deliver metal uh, in a more sustainable way. But also the, the world still needs a lot of primary aluminium uh, to deliver on the green transition. And then we uh, are working on a lot of new technologies uh, to take uh, carbon out and reduce carbon emissions from the existing processes. How can we improve access to this material? Well, in the, the, the current uh, macro environment, uh, having an overview of uh, the strategic uh, raw materials and securing access to them is important. And you can do this in, in many ways. Um, you can do this uh, through importing uh, more uh, aluminium, uh, creating uh, long-term uh, agreements. Uh, but uh, that uh, carries a certain risk and it doesn't necessarily uh, lead to uh, value creation uh, in the, the home countries. Uh, so the, the other alternative is to produce more. Um, in, uh, for example, uh, Europe. Uh, we are in the unfortunate uh, situation uh, where uh, more than 50% uh, of uh, European aluminium capacity has been curtailed uh, since the, the energy crisis. Um, and if you uh, look back even uh, further, it's another million tons uh, which was taken out uh, b before that. The third area, um, which is uh, probably uh, the uh, most uh, interesting uh, for many these days, is to increase recycling rates, uh, take uh, more back uh, of uh, what has been uh, consumed uh, and ensure uh, circular loops. Uh, so those three are the, the main topics I would uh, lift.